Hey, this is Dr. Brian Mole, the diabetes coach. I'm a certified diabetes care and education specialist and IFM certified functional medicine practitioner. I specialize in helping people to reverse insulin resistance, metabolic dysfunction, and type 2 diabetes using a natural personalized diet and lifestyle approach. Today, I want to share my thoughts on some of the recent lean mass hyper responder studies and videos produced by my friends Nick Norwitz and Dave Feldman. Before we get into that, I just want to remind you to subscribe to this channel if you like this content. I've been uploading shorts almost every day, and I try to do at least one long-form video a week for you. But if you like this content, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and click that bell for notifications so you don't miss my videos. I'd also love to hear your comments about what I'm going to talk about today, lean mass hyper-responders, people who have elevated LDL cholesterol in particular, but also LDL particle numbers on a low carbohydrate diet. And these are people who are typically lean, fit, and metabolically healthy. So if you have something to say about this, maybe if you are in that category of lean mass hyper responders, or you think this is all nonsense, put a comment below. Love to get a conversation going about this topic. All right. So first things first, what is a lean mass hyper responder? This is a term that was coined by my friend Dave Feldman. I've known Dave for almost a decade at this point. He started a low carb diet back in 2015 to lose weight, transformed his health, but noticed that his LDL cholesterol went really high. As an engineer, he decided he wanted to figure out why, and he embarked on this scientific research path to get some answers. Basically, a lean mass hyperresponder is someone who's following a carbohydrate restricted diet. That could be a low carb diet, a very low carbohydrate diet, a ketogenic diet, but it's going to be significant carb restricted and they see a profound elevation in LDL cholesterol. So their LDL was normal or maybe mildly elevated on a balanced diet, like a Mediterranean style diet. But when they restrict carbs, their LDL goes up very high. So recently, they've published some studies, put some numbers on this. So they're saying a LDL of equal to or greater than 200 milligram per deciliter with these two other factors, which is the lean mass hyperresponder triad. So the other two factors are an HDL of greater than or equal to 80 milligrams per deciliter and a triglyceride level of equal to or less than 70 milligrams per deciliter. So you've got really high LDL with high HDL and low triglycerides. These people also tend to be lean, fit, and metabolically healthy. So Dave has a little diagram on his website, which sort of shows this in addition to that triad of lab results. So low adiposity, not a lot of body fat, insulin sensitive, so low insulin, leptin sensitive, so low fasting leptin. And by the way, we test all these on all of our clients. Really important to know leptin, adiponectin levels, fasting insulin levels, especially if you're battling with something like diabetes. Now, most of these people don't have diabetes and aren't struggling with insulin resistance and blood sugar issues, but they do have this really high LDL when they restrict carbs. So many of these people, like Dave, maybe were once heavier and then they lost weight. Some of them are doing it for exercise performance or metabolic health, ironically, and then discover they have this profound increase in LDL cholesterol. And of course, this is a major red flag because conventionally, LDL cholesterol is considered a primary causative risk factor of ASCVD or atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. LDL particles, when elevated, have been shown to enter blood vessel walls, get trapped, oxidized, engulfed by immune cells, triggering an inflammatory process, and eventually forming an arterial plaque, which can start to occlude an artery, eventually burst, and block blood flow to the heart or the brain or some other parts of the body. This is no joke. LDL, high LDL particles are a major risk factor. And of course, you're doing this to become metabolically healthy to avoid major problems, and then you see this really strange 
finding. Dave studied this for a long time. Uh, Nick Norwitz, who is a PhD from Oxford Medical School at Harvard, is studying this with him as well. They've published a number of studies over the past few years, and one of them seeks to explain the mechanism of why LDL goes up so much on a carb-restricted diet in this population. It's called the lipid energy model. There was a paper published on it in the journal Metabolites. And basically what the lipid energy model states is that in a lean population with low adiposity, low body fat, on a carbohydrate-restricted diet, there's a higher reliance on fat oxidation in the periphery for energy production. That leads to greater fat flux, greater fat turnover, which increases the production of triglycerides in the liver, drives up VLDL lipoproteins to carry that triglyceride, and because because that triglyceride gets metabolized so quickly, we have all these leftover remnant LDL particles, which drives up the LDL particle number and consequently the LDL cholesterol number. Now, a couple interesting things about this population. BMI and LDL have an inverse relationship. So the lower the BMI, the greater the increase in LDL, and the higher the BMI, the lower the LDL. Another interesting thing is the LDL did not tend to be high before they went on carbohydrate restriction, and reintroduction of a moderate amount of carbohydrates will lower the LDL. In fact, Nick Norwitz recently did a N equals 1 experiment, which has now been published, where he compared eating 12 Oreo cookies per day to statin therapy to lower his LDL. Now, Nick is the PhD scientist from Oxford, the Harvard University medical student. He also is a self-reported lean mass hyperresponder. So his LDL is high on a carbohydrate-restricted diet when he introduces or reintroduces carbs through these 12 Oreos a day, about 100 grams of carbs, the LDL comes back down significantly. In fact, Nick had a 71% reduction in LDL by eating the 12 Oreos, again, reintroducing 100 grams of carbohydrate to his diet. He compared that to high-dose statin therapy, 20 milligrams of resuvastatin, which only reduced his LDL by 32.5%. So the carbohydrate reintroduction, the Oreo cookies, had over twice the impact that the high-dose statin therapy did. So what does this tell us? It tells us that there's a population of people currently called lean mass hyperresponders who are thin with a lower percentage of body fat, who have a very high LDL response to a low-carbohydrate or ketogenic diet. We know reintroduction of carbohydrate can bring the LDL back down, and we have an idea of why the LDL goes up so high. But here's the most important and burning question. Is this elevated LDL in this particular metabolically healthy population dangerous? Does the cardiovascular risk from the elevated LDL cholesterol, LDL particle number, still hold up in this population of metabolically healthy people? And in the words of Dave Feldman, who started this ball rolling, the short answer is we don't know. So there's some ongoing research right now where they're evaluating cardiovascular health indicators, indicators of atherosclerotic changes to the blood vessels in lean mass hyperresponders. So far, according to Dave, the results are looking pretty good. But until we have long-term longitudinal data in this population, we really don't know if the elevated LDL is a major risk factor or not. The other main scientist involved with this, Nick Norwitz, says he errs on the side of caution and encourages people in this population to reduce their LDL particle numbers, to reduce their risk until we get confirmed data that can contradict that. And that, in fact, is my recommendation. Use all the natural strategies that you possibly can, including improving metabolic health, increasing fiber, omega-3 fats, reducing stress, improving sleep quality, using various botanicals. And yes, if necessary, consider using some cholesterol-lowering or LDL particle-lowering medications in combination with those lifestyle factors to get that LDL particle number down to a healthier range and reduce your risk 
risk of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. Hopefully soon we'll have some more answers from Dave's research team, and maybe one day we'll find out that there's more to this, and in this group, maybe the LDL just doesn't matter. But until then, better safe than sorry. All right, so I hope you found this helpful. I'm Dr. Brian Mole, the diabetes coach. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this topic. Maybe you totally disagree with me and my conclusions. Maybe you agree. Put a comment below and let me know what your thoughts are on this topic, and I'd love to get a conversation going. Subscribe to the channel if you like this content, and I'll be back with another video soon. Take care. Thank you.